The coaching news is this. Mike McCarthy back as coach in Dallas for the 2024 season. He will go into the final year of his contract unless they extend it. McCarthy's return coming on the heels of losing 48-32 to the Packers in the wild card round. So McCarthy is now 1-3 in the postseason in Dallas coming off three straight 12 win seasons. Jerry Jones releasing the following statement. There is accountability for our results. I am accountable for our results. The lens we use to view and evaluate Coach McCarthy is holistic. While we're all disappointed with the result on Sunday and with our playoff record, I am 100% supportive of him as our head coach and our ability to reach our goals. So that's what Jerry Jones said. We're going to hear what everyone here says, and we're going to hear what Adam Schefter knows, which is first and foremost, as always. Shefty, take us through this. There was so much speculation over the last three days. How did Jerry Jones arrive at this decision? Well, Greeny, with each day that went by without a decision, that told you more and more that the Cowboys were not going to go in a direction in which they would be firing Mike McCarthy. And there began to be whispers about it the last couple of days that Jerry would not be making a change. And I think he made it readily apparent in a couple of things that he said yesterday. Number one, he believes in continuity, stability, and that Mike McCarthy has the highest winning percentage in the regular season of any coach in Dallas Cowboys history. That statement stayed with Jerry Jones. And he talked about the fact that it was not just Mike McCarthy that deserves the blame for Sunday's loss against the Green Bay Packers. It was Mike McCarthy, it was the rest of the coaches, it was the players, it was the front office, and Jerry Jones said it was himself. So all of them played a role. And as Jerry Jones thought about all of that and thought about the record in the regular season and thought about the blame that everybody shared, shared in Sunday's disappointing loss to the Green Bay Packers, he ultimately decided that change at this point would not be a good thing. He's done this before. He's had Jason Garrett enter into the last year of his deal on two separate occasions when he was the Dallas Cowboys head coach. Now, Mike McCarthy is scheduled to head into the last year of his contract, which obviously brings a whole other set of issues. But the fact of the matter is Jerry Jones believes in the end that this team is better with Mike McCarthy than it is without him. And, and so, Shefty, this is a circumstance where there are two separate things. There, there are two things going on on parallel tracks. Because there's A, there's the decision of whether Mike McCarthy is the right coach for the team. And B, as we have repeatedly said, this is a very unusual year. This is a year in which Bill Belichick is a coaching free agent. This is a year in which Jim Harbaugh very much appears poised to finally come back to the NFL, which we've been waiting a long time for. It is worth Mike Vrabel's name also gets thrown around out there. Is there any way of knowing or wondering aloud whether or not any of those any of the tires were kicked on that by Jerry Jones before he made this decision final? Yeah, he did not kick the tires on those coaches, to the best of my knowledge. Now, is it possible that there's some clandestine call that I did not hear or know about? Yes, that's possible. But to the best of my abilities, Greeny, I don't believe that Jerry Jones reached out to these coaches and tested the waters and kicked the tires, however you want to call it, to see whether they would be interested in becoming the Dallas Cowboys head coach. I think he was deciding on what to do with Mike McCarthy singularly, and he made the decision that his team was better off. I don't believe he reached out to Bill Belichick and had conversations. I don't believe he reached out to Jim Harbaugh and had conversations. I don't believe he reached out to Mike Vrabel and had conversations. And the truth of the matter is, despite the fact that Sunday's loss was so poor and so embarrassing and so disappointing, there's been talk for a long time about Dan Quinn on the mm -hmm. Cowboys staff and whether he could one day succeed Mike McCarthy. Well, interestingly enough, today, Dan Quinn is interviewing with the Washington Commanders and the Seattle Seahawks. He's scheduled to interview tomorrow with the Los Angeles Chargers. This comes after two more interviews on Wednesday. So it certainly looks like while Mike McCarthy is poised to be back, Dan Quinn, despite the performance on Sunday, is on track to land one of these head coaching jobs and surface in the NFL next season away from the Dallas Cowboys, which will be another blow for this organization to absorb with the role that he had on that defense and within that team.
Yeah, I, I knew all those things because I read them on your Instagram page this morning, and I immediately, <laughs> I immediately made an angry comment. I, I made an angry comment about all of that from about about Dan Quinn. Okay, so Dan, the decision is made. They're bringing back Mike McCarthy. What is your reaction? I think it's the wrong decision by Dallas. We'll find out next January who's right. I want to touch on two things that Shefty mentioned, that Jerry Jones said, well, Mike McCarthy's got the highest win percentage in the history of the Cowboys for a regular season. Stop right there. Don't talk to us about Super Bowls anymore then. Don't feed us this lie that there's nothing on planet Earth that you'll do more than try to win a Super Bowl. You, you are literally keeping a coach, and in your words, because he wins in the regular season. He doesn't win in the playoffs, certainly not with you guys. The second thing is, well, Mike McCarthy doesn't deserve the blame. Well, then who does? Who, if, if you just witnessed and watched one of the worst playoff losses in the history of your organization, an absolute collapse, where does the blame fall? You're going to tell me it falls on the roster or the front office? You have 15 Pro Bowlers. You have an offensive player of the year. You have a quarterback at MVP. You have three Pro, Bowl, Pro Bowlers on your offense. You have one of the best young tight ends in football. You have a defensive player of the year candidate in Micah Parsons. It falls on the front office? So it, who is going to get the blame for this whole situation then? My, at the end of the day, again, I think it's the wrong choice. We'll find out next January. Jerry Jones, please stop talking about Super Bowls. You really aren't chasing Super Bowls. You're chasing comfort. That's why you kept this decision. And the third thing is this. With that decision, this better be the most aggressive offseason in the history of the Dallas Cowboys if you actually want to change the narrative around it. Let's keep it honest about this defense. Against winning teams this year, against winning teams this year, this defense gave up 30 points a game. So you, you better build up the defensive unit. Yep. Three, you better hire somebody that can handle clock management because that came a story. And then you're going to have to extend Dak Prescott. You need a second tight end. You better go get a running back because Tony Pollard's going to be gone. You got to figure out right tackle. You need defensive tackle, defensive tackle, two inside linebackers, Resan, Micah, and CD Lamb. That's it. Outside of that, they're in terrific Outside shape. of that, they <laughs> play Mrs. Lincoln. Harry, Mike McCarthy, back. Your reaction is? Well, first thing it says to me that Jerry Jones is comfortable. And I was always taught you need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's not the situation, in my opinion, when it comes to Jerry Jones. And to a, to a degree, you understand it. But when you talk about winning Super Bowls, you can't understand it, right? Mm -hmm. This is an organization, this franchise is worth eight or nine billion dollars. Well, that's my point exactly, Dan, because this move tells me that. When you look at the coaching candidates that are available right now to you, and, and Greeny, you just mentioned it. Bill Belichick, he won six Super Bowls. You look at Mike Vrabel, he's able to define an identity, something that the Dallas Cowboys definitely need to figure out uh, offensively and defensively. And then also when you look at Jim Harbaugh, he's a guy that's been able to have success building a program in which we watch him do at the University of Michigan and winning the national championship. And he had instant success when he was with the San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers. So those three coaching candidates alone, in my opinion, are upgrades over Mike McCarthy. I understand he's won 12 games and went 12 and five the last three years. But are, we're, are we satisfied? Are we comfortable with the regular season? Mm. Or, or, and are you trying to win a Super Bowl? Because that eight, nine billion dollar franchise, if you win a Super Bowl, I would say it would be worth probably what? $14 million yeah. if you win a Super Bowl? That, that, that's just my opinion. And, and I agree with Dan on the roster. You got a lot of holes you got to fill. Kmart. So I thought you made a great point about we will see in a year who's right. I don't think you just make changes to make changes. But when I hear Adam Schefter say, to my knowledge, I, I don't think Jerry even tried to find out if Belichick was interested. To me, that's a mistake to just see. Because I think if you're an owner, you have to do whatever you can to make sure that I am exploring every avenue to improve my roster, my coaching staff, or my quarterback. It, you can say what you want about, there, there are questions about every facet of this team. Now, if you're gonna fire Mike McCarthy, you have to have a clear cut plan of what you're gonna do next. And I don't think Jerry looked at this season at any point and thought, I'm not gonna have Mike McCarthy. So mm -hmm. when the wild card game happened, I think he was stunned and there was no thought in his mind of like switching gears. But the question of, you know, yesterday before the news came out, and I'm thinking about, would it be a mistake if they kept McCarthy? I think it's only a mistake, I thought it was only a mistake if Jerry had any doubt that McCarthy could win him a championship. And if, if what Troy Aikman said on the Stephen A. Smith show, when he said, I don't know if, Troy said something like, I'm not sure if Jerry at his age would want to go through another Starting regime Starting over again, yeah. 
Yeah. That is not an answer. Right. <laughs> that cannot be it. So to me, it's almost like a marriage where it's like people aren't happy. You're, you're not sure if this is going to work, but it's easier to stay in it than to, to embrace the unknown. And that, to me, is the worst thing. Don't want to give everyone the impression that everyone disagrees with this. Cindy, let's put Mike Tannenbaum's tweet up. I, I'd like, and Greg Olson, I know, is on Twitter very yeah. much defending this after he did on the broadcast the other day. Mike Tannenbaum thinks it's the right decision. Mike T tweeting, this is the right decision. It's incredibly hard to win. 36 regular season games in three seasons. With that said, he needs to significantly improve upon his clock management, but his overall body of work is deserving. Yeah, you know again, what's hard to yeah. get your absolute doors blown off at home. Like that's hard too. Like we we have to. I I, I don't understand. I don't understand. While everyone continues to take that one snippet and said, "Well, he's won 36 regular season games." Of course, their roster is for the most part loaded. They're also 13 and 15 versus teams that end the season with winning records. So which number do we want to spin to make the story that we want? No one is saying he can't coach. No <coughs> one is saying that they weren't a good team. What we're saying is you're settling for just that. What we're saying, what we're saying is how can you watch what happened on Sunday? You were a massive home favorite and you got embarrassed and mainly because of coaching. Yes. No. Yeah. That's the point. And we, we talked about, and Shefty said it. He, he wrote it in a piece the day be, the season ended, which was they're going to judge based at least in part on how the season, season ends. ends, on how their last game looks. And their last game looked just awful. awful. And I totally agree with you yeah. that it was, okay, hold on a second. I, I got people in my ear. Stop. I'm going to 20. Uh -oh. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to a break. They're telling me to go to a break. I'm not going to a break. I got Adam Schefter. I'm not going anywhere. Shefty I made Luke Schefter. Make it make sense. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Shefty, you, you told me. I re, I, everything, you, I, I, lean on, I, I, I lean forward with every word you say. You said that it was a known fact that Jerry Jones was going to judge his decision based on how his season ended. His season couldn't have ended worse. His team had circles coached around it on Sunday by the Green Bay Packers, who had no business embarrassing them the way they did. That is the part of this that is not adding up to me. Well, what happened is there are people that said that in the organization, out of the organization, and I think in the end, when push comes to shove, Jerry Jones just didn't feel comfortable going into the unknown, and ultimately mm. he decided, we're going to stand pat. And you can't look at this team right now and say that it is trending to be in better shape, better shape next season, than it was this season because of all the issues that we just laid out, all the questions that this team must address this offseason. You have to pay Dak because he's in the last year of his contract. Got to pay CeeDee Lamb. Got to pay Micah Parsons. Can't afford to keep everybody. Have all those pending free agents. Probably going to lose Dan Quinn. There are so many issues to address. But ultimately, Jerry Jones made the big decision in regards to the first main significant one. We're not making a coaching change. I'm going to stick by Mike McCarthy because of what he's done in the regular season because we all hold some blame for what happened Sunday, and we're going to see if we can get this right and run it back again. How are you going to win a Super Bowl if you, A, can't run the football, and if you can't, B, stop the run? You can't. H how is it going to happen? Yeah. Oh, you can't. It's very simple. And today, five, six years ago, you could. It's a different NFL. You can't. And that's why I said, it, let's, let's have a conversation about their roster, okay? So you're going to extend Dak Prescott because you have to. Right. Okay, so then are you going to pay CeeDee Lamb? He's, he's going to demand. You have to. He's the, best play, he's the best player on their offense. Then who's going to play right tackle? Because right tackle is then going to be a question mark. That, this, this Maybe they like, can bring Damian Woody out of retirement. This, this <laughs> offense has got to find different ways to beat you. When it was perfect and they lived in utopia, they could roll. But that's not what the playoffs are. They got exposed. And the defensively, they have a seven-on-seven seven defense. They have a seven-on-seven seven defense. Listen, you know I, I want everyone to, to focus on what Shefty just said. I'm going to rephrase what Shefty just said. The best Cowboys team that we're going to see for a while was the one that walked off that field on Sunday. They are going to get worse, no, not better. I don't, I don't agree with that. You don't get better by paying $100 million to three players this offseason and not adding anyone new to the mix. They are, by definition, going to lose 
players. Dak Prescott's going to get paid a whole lot more. C.D. Lamb's going to get paid a whole lot yes. more. Micah Parsons is going to get paid a whole lot more. That means you're not going out and adding half the people you just said they need to go out there and add. Their window was this year, and they blew it. And no, they blew it in I, large I, part I because their that. coaching was horrendous. I disagree with that, the window is closed type of thing. This year. This next 12 months from now, this is the year. Because after this year, all those young players will be up yep. at some point. And it will be a total rebuild if they don't get it done. I'm talking complete total rebuild. This is the year. That's why I said this has to be the most aggressive offseason in the history of their franchise. They got to go study what the Rams did with F them picks and figure out how to do that. They got to figure out what the Saints have done with pushing the cap, all that. They have to go completely all in and make it very publicly clear this is going to be a disaster in a year or two when it comes to like having to pay it forward. But we are all in this year. They're going to have to figure out picks and money, all that stuff. I don't think it's done. So I, I agree with you. I don't think I think the Cowboys are, are are still close to winning a Super Bowl. That said, what you're describing, Dan, is almost a change in philosophy. It feels Correct. like because we talked about okay, what are the moves that the Cowboys can make in free agency in the off season, but also in season by the trade deadline. What can they do? Running back? Are they going to add somebody? Like what are line? What are they going to do? And they didn't do anything. So when you look at the no. Cowboys and you're saying they need to go all in, I'm with you. But Jerry Jones, this move, keeping McCarthy, is in line with how he sort of operated with yeah. his head coaches. Right. Now, are you going to expect them, that Jerry Jones then changes his philosophy and says, oh, we're going to be uber aggressive? He clearly thinks but, this but team the is close. Is in the he to clearly me, though, thinks, but here's the thing. Jerry Jones, who owns this team, thinks that they are on the doorstep of a Super Bowl. It, at least that's what he's saying. Yeah. Because his actions are, are, are dictating, I think we can run this back. With this quarterback, with this head coach. Oh yeah. So, so whose quarterback and whose head coach would you rather have right now, Green Bay's or Dallas's? Green, Green Bay. Not even worth talking Green, about. I, I, right? I'll give Green you Bay. Green Bay. Bay. And, their, and, and their running backs and run game. I mean, I'll give you Green Bay. I'd give you Detroit. I'd give you San Francisco. I'd give you the Rams. Give me Minnesota. I bet you Washington hires somebody really good and gets really good fast. That that was my point on Monday. We're just gonna sit here and float and know that we're going to go into next year at a deficiency. In, but in fairness to Mike McCarthy, I imagine if I'm Mike McCarthy, I go into that, uh, to that meeting with Jerry Jones and I say, for much of the season, Dak Prescott had an MVP season. First year in my offense, me and Dak, imagine what we can do next year. Like, but, I, but, I, it, but it just can't be that because the, the last three playoff games that you played, and you lost. Look at the makeup of those football teams. They're balanced offensively. They beat you with the run and the pass. You can't be one-dimensional and think you're going to win a Super Bowl. Shefty, give me a final word. You know, all season long we talked about this is the Cowboys' best chance to get back to and win a Super Bowl. Dak Prescott, MVP. They are loaded. All season long, so much positive Cowboys talk. They played a terrible game Sunday. They played it at the most inopportune time. That's our mm -hmm. lasting memory of the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe this team is better than we all think, despite the fact that it crashed and burned on Sunday. Maybe. Maybe. But the only thing, I'm not suggesting Mike McCarthy is a bad coach. I'm no, not saying any of those yeah. things. What I'm saying, and there's a lot of debate as to whether or not Albert Einstein is the one who said this or not, but either way, it's true. <laughs> Sometimes you can define insanity by doing the same thing over and over <coughs> again and hoping the results will be different. Sometimes change for change's sake is a good idea. Shefty, stay close by. No one disputes that Dak Prescott had a great year. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, he was the MVP of the league. He's probably going to finish second in the MVP voting or someplace close to that. No one is disputing that. But once again, when they needed it most, he came up small. And Dan, that is... That at this moment, until he changes it, and I hope he does, because I like everything about him, but until he changes it, it, that is the narrative. Well, until Dak changes it, the only word that's going to be associated with him is but. He's really good, but. He, he's really good, but when they have to have him play his best game against the good team in the biggest moment, he doesn't get it done. And listen, Dak Prescott is a good player. He has moments when he's been a very good player. The last three playoff losses that this team has, has suffered, he has played poorly in all three of those games. He's got five interceptions in those games. He's taken 10 sacks in those games. It just has not been good enough. Don't talk to me about Tampa Bay last year. My eight-year-old daughter would have carved them up. So, <laughs> th there is this problem in Dallas right now where they have to figure out 
Why can a player be so good for such a long period of time and then when it gets to that moment, shrink? They got to figure that out because until they do, the word that will be associated with them is but. Yeah, I agree with Dan. At, at this point now, you got to figure out how you can get Dak Prescott to elevate everyone around him in the biggest moments. And it's not going to be about the regular season. And, and for me, it wasn't this season. It's going to be about what can you do in the playoffs? What kind of brand of football can you play? Can you play good football? Because, Dan, it was just some uncharacteristic things I seen against the Green Bay Packers. And it was right. troubling to see because when you looked uh, on the opposing team sidelines and you see a first-year starting quarterback in Jordan Love like this. and the way he was handling things, yeah. it, it, it can be upsetting if you're a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. But that first interception, I don't know why he didn't throw the football to C.D. Lamb. The right. second interception, why would you not go to the outside receiver who's one-on-one -on -one when you see that same to come down and try to take anything away from the middle of the football field. It's just inexcusable. And it should have been a third one. But Devondre Campbell dropped, dropped that one in the, in the end zone. So I agree with both of you, but I'm going to push back on something you just said, Harry. You said it's about got to get Dak to play in those moments in the playoffs. It's about, it's about the playoffs. Well, clearly it's, it, it's not if you're Jerry Jones you're because right. the numbers are the numbers. Like, he is a very good player. I, but he's 2-5 and five in the postseason. When you look at this team, right. you, you, you're waiting for this, but Jerry has, has confidence in him, and they will extend him. So, so you could say it's about, it's about the playoffs, but all the decisions that they've made thus far. Well, I'm saying in, in reference to winning a Super Bowl right. and advancing to at least an NFC championship game, I, he has to be better in those yes, moments. I have limited yes, time with Shefty. So let, let me get back Sorry. to him here, and then we'll have the rest of the morning to debate all this other stuff. Shefty, just quickly to, to sort of close the button or, or the loop on the DAC of it all. What there isn't any question well, of is that a quarterback of his quality, you're going to re-sign him. I mean, th th these, there aren't more than five guys better, definitively better than him. He's going to get the massive contract, right? Well, they have to do something to create cap space because right now he's scheduled to count for over $59 million against the right. salary cap. So if you want to have him go into the last year of his deal and then be not tagged and be able to leave in free agency, then, yeah, you're not going to do something. So you're going to try to work with him starting there to create some cap space. He's going to want to see this team improve. Quarterbacks do work with teams on restructuring deals, of course, that benefit them, but give their teams the needed cap relief that they need to bolster their roster that season and to kick the bill down the road. That's what Dak is going to try to do. That's what the Cowboys are going to try to do. He is going to be starting point A when it comes to trying to find more cap space while at the same time trying to cash in himself. And that's the problem that Sunday's game leaves everybody with, right? What do you do? Because nobody's stock is higher after that playoff performance.